Hi guys, I'm Lauren. Welcome to my channel. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you guys for popping in. Today we are going to talk about a very, very slept on topic that I've mentioned in the past before a couple of times and I've never really done an in-depth video of it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. That topic is intentional pruning. And you're probably sitting there going, what? <laughs> Intentional pruning is when you go and you purposefully chop up a plant a specific way or you cut off bits of a plant in a specific way in order to have it grow the way you want so that you can shape and get your plant to be the way that you want it to be. Bonsai creators do this all the time with trees and I have started to adapt it with my houseplants. I know lots of other people do adapt it to their houseplants. It's just not something that's very talked about very often. I'm not really sure why because it's not a very complicated subject. Basically, I've just been doing experiments for myself, chopping up plants here and seeing how they react. And I kind of wanted to show you how some of our most common and basic plants react to being chopped up. So that way, when you go to propagate your plants, you can have them grow the way that you want them to. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first one that I wanted to talk about today is, uh, it's an epipremnum, um, but it's commonly called a pothos. And I wanted to show you that I chopped off here to propagate it and it shoots out at the next node underneath and grows a whole bunch more nodes. I also wanted to note that the internode, this part right here, there was more space in between before I chopped it off. Okay, so now you can see like the, the spaces, the internodes, in between it's actually producing a lot more growth it's producing more aerial roots you can see the aerial root here is kind of rubbed off but over here it's got a lot more um, so chopping these particular plants back definitely promotes growth and it will push out new growth off to the side um, from that that last node that was left there so that's something good to note I would recommend um, maybe chopping up higher up and that way it'll branch off to the side from the last node left and you'll have more full looking plant because it'll be more close together. So that's just kind of it. This is a thirsty plant, I apologize. I will be watering them later today. This is the Pothos, um, oh shoot. This is the Pothos Pearls and Jade is what it came labeled as. But um, it just basically depends on how much variegation it has, if it's a glacier or not. And that really just depends on how much light it gets. Um, yeah so but it's basically all the same plant it's just how much variegation is it pushing off at the time all right moving on to the next one all right so I know this is not the prettiest plant it definitely needs like a fertilization and to be repotted but I wanted to show you guys um, with these cap caparata peperomia you can see all this new growth coming out at the base it's because when you take an when you take a cutting off of this type of peperomia caparata it will get very very bushy at the base there and it'll push out new growth from the base so that's just something to note there this peperomia napoli nights also does the same thing not all peperomia behave this way so i really wanted to touch on this um oh my goodness so you can see there that we've taken cuttings from the big ones and it's encouraged all this new growth from the base to come out so it, it looks very big and bushy. It's actually kind of heart-shaped right now, which I, I didn't realize. Like, is that just me or am I crazy? <laughs> but you can see all of this older growth is the bigger leaves. And then all of these smaller, more silver leaves coming in is all the new growth. And you can see it kind of hardens off. It still has silver, but it's more green as it matures. So that's something to keep in mind with this type of peperomia. Up here, this is, I made this trellis in my last video, so you can go and watch that if you're interested. Um, but this is a Peperomia angulata, and you can see it gets cut, and then the next node right underneath, it will push out a whole new vine. And that's just what it does. That's how this one grows. So you want to cut back on the base, and then it will grow further out from there. A red log is another one. Here is what it looks like. I've had to wrap it around the pot because it just goes crazy. But I chopped it here and at the node underneath it actually branched out twice. I hope that focused. There we go. So um, and then this one I chopped off here and then it pushed out a whole new thing at the base before. So that's just kind of how that one grows. I would definitely recommend cutting closer to the base than not. Alright. Oh okay. So here is one. You can tell there was another vine here, but I chopped it off. This has been chopped a couple of times. Um, 
this is the string of daggers, I believe. But you chop it here and then it pushes out a new vine and it divides up. So that's how you can get a more full and bushy looking plant as well. You can kind of see, nope, that's not working. I'm sorry, I put all these up so they're all kind of tangled. Very tangled, thirsty plants, I'm sorry. But yes, these will totally divide. They'll divide into two just like the angulata does. So that's what's going on with those. Um, this, all the serapegias seem to do it. I've done it with this one, done it with this one, I've done it with these two. So that's four different ones that it's all worked that way with, so. Pinka vine down here, um, it also does the same thing. When you chop it, it'll actually branch off and create more off to the side, so. It also I noticed like, I'm sorry, the spider plant's in the shot. Um, it also likes to push off from the base as well, I noticed. So it'll do a twofold if you chop up this one. This is normally an outdoor plant, not an indoor plant, but again, just something to keep in mind. Um, another one that will push off to the base, let me get back here for you. So if you take a cutting off of the bottom of these African violets, they will push out new growth there as well. You can see all these little ones coming out because I chopped off this one here and then I had another one down there and it's just pushed off all this new growth in here. So these are so soft, I love these so much. But that's what goes on with those as well. My plants are thirsty, but um, <laughs> I apologize. I swear I'm gonna water them after this video. But I wanted to show you this Tratoscantia. Oh, here, okay. So I took a cutting right there, and then you can see it divided into two completely different plants, which is really cool. And then, I don't know if you can kind of see, right on the other side there in the middle, it's gonna be pushing off a third one. So this is again another one. It got chopped down here, and it branched off and branched off. Um, it, it just continues to divide. So this is one of those plants. This is an upright Tritoscantia, um, as opposed to the creeping ones. This is more of a bushy form, although it can be trailing, it's just got a thicker stem. Um, but this one in particular will get much more bushy the more you propagate it, which is really cool and just something to keep in mind because if a plant is too bushy in the center of it, uh, like that Peperomia napoleonica I showed you earlier, it can become quite troublesome to be able to treat if it ever gets a pest. Um, it can also block out light and prevent leaves inside from being able to get light and sustaining themselves. Then they will die off and then it will be harder for you to take care of it and keep it pest free. So. Bushy is great, yes, but just kind of make sure that some air can get in there as well, along with a little bit of light, you know? Um, but this is just so cool. This was just um, the one little cutting and then I've just propagated it and propagated it since then. So, um, definitely really cool. And then with these more creeping, this is the Albo Vitata, I believe, uh, Tratoscantia. But with these creeping Tratoscantia, when you take off a cutting, it will produce another one here and then also will go back to the base and will produce a whole separate vine down there. Like this one got chopped off here and it produced whoop, a whole separate vine at the bottom. The vine at the bottom seems to be more of a guarantee than producing more growth up at the top. This one has been propagated. Sorry, my hand keeps getting in the way. This one has been propagated quite a bit um, just because it was such a tiny little bit and I really love it. But it's so pretty and cute. Look at that. I mean, who doesn't love that? So, but that's what happens with these. So I've seen it over here with this one. Um, I have a bunch of other ones like this that are various colors that all do that same shooting off from the base. And then sometimes they'll give you a little bit there. So just something to keep in mind if you're going to prune them. Okay. Whoops, sorry, I'm standing on my sofa right now. This is not the, the best thing to do, but I wanted to show you guys Hoya. Okay, Hoya, it really depends on the type of Hoya when you're pruning them, what's gonna happen. For example, the Hoya Pupa Calyx, it got chopped and then it produced a bunch of different new growth. It's got new growth right there. It had the leaves on either side, then it produced these leaves. I, it's just kind of crazy. You never know what this is gonna do. So that's the Hoya Pupa Calyx. Um, this one got chopped and then it ended up dying off a little bit more, which is a little sad, and it hasn't produced any new growth since. So I'm not sure what's going on with that one. This one is, oh, I'm sorry, this is a Hoya Crinkle, ugh. this is a Hoya Crinkle 
So this is a Hoya Crimson Princess, and then it will push out a lot more growth if you chop it as well. It does slow the growth of this particular Hoya, and with any of these Hoya, um, if you chop them, you will slow them down in their blooming process. So it will take them a little bit longer to start to bloom again. All right, let's come over here. This is another example of that Hoya Pubicalyx where it got chopped and then it just grew this whole crazy big vine instead. So that's just what it does. With the philodendron burl marks, I did want to note under here that when you take a cutting from the philodendron burl marks, it will push out new growth from the last node underneath. So you can kind of see that that's what it has done here. And then it facilitated new growth down here as well and down here. So this one doesn't tend to grow further up. So if you're gonna chop and prop this one, I would suggest that you do something more along and closer to the base so that you have a big, full, bushy plant and you don't have these yucky brown stems to look at up high. So I don't know what happened here, but uh, just something to keep in mind. This is one of my recovery plants, but um, I did have to chop a lot off of it when I was rehabilitating it back in December. So all of this is actually new growth except for maybe, I would say maybe about two or three leaves I believe is all new growth on this particular plant. So and you can see a lot of it got chopped. So that's what happens with that plant. I, I did it with three of them, they all did the same thing. So I'm gonna say that that's a solid for sure, definite. <laughs> So I know this is not like the best angle, I'm sorry. Um, I did wanna say that if you prune a begonia, try to take it, try to take a stem cutting and take it from the base because it's going to push out more from the base of the plant. So you end up with a big, full, bushy plant like this. I've done it with a whole bunch of different begonia. Um, there is currently six chilling in here that I have done that with. You can see over here, I did the same thing. Um, I did it with the escargot over here. I don't know what this one's name is, um, but I did it with this one as well. You can see that there's a whole bunch of new growth coming in at the base over here as well. I'm sorry, I can't really get in the fish tank anymore or it messes up the sound of the mic so but uh I just have them in the fish tank for the higher humidity currently eventually this will be an actual begonia fish tank I think um but yeah that's something to keep in mind if you are going to try to get like a more full more bushy begonia try to grab it on a whole stem cutting and then from that stem cutting is where you're going to end up getting more coming from at the base there so so some of you have asked about calathea, like what happens when you chop calathea? Um, or yeah. Okay. So what happens when you chop calathea? Honestly, it depends on the calathea. Um, for these ones in particular, you can see how this is a calathea zebrina. So if you chop the entire stem all the way back down to the base, you're going to miss out this new growth coming in. Um, so when I chop off dead foliage or I try to prune, um, Calathea, I will try to prune from up here and I will wait and see if new growth pops out. Sometimes, a lot of the times, I'm not gonna lie, you will end up with like a dead stem like this and then you can just remove the whole thing. But I'd say one out of three times I end up getting new growth like this and it's totally worth it. Especially if there is already like multiple growths coming from the stem area there, um, if that makes any sense. This guy's being treated for thrips, so that's why he's kind of over here and he's not looking his best, but he is trying. I did also want to share, um, this is the Hartley philodendron. I've definitely talked about it before. You can see that it's kind of climbing up. I absolutely love it. Uh, but I have propagated it quite a bit. And when I propagate it, I notice that it tends to do the side thing like the pothos and the epipremnum, where it'll come out from the side, but it tends to be like more swooshy and more flimsy. It's not as thick and firm. Um, it's like it's reaching out more. I also notice that it tends to push more out in the base there. So the more you chop it, the more it's going to get thicker at the base there and push out more new growth. The new growth is always smaller though, I noticed. Even if you cut off a big leaf and it's a bigger, thicker stem, the new growth always comes out smaller. And then sometimes depending on the conditions, it will get bigger or it will just continue to get smaller from there. So just something to keep in mind with that as well. Okay, so Monstera, sorry, this is like a horrible angle. Like, okay, this is what I'm looking at with my Monstera. So I'm trying to like get in there and get close for you. So bear with me here. 
Um, ah, it's like navigating a jungle. I love it. Okay, so when you chop a monstera, what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna push out new growth from around where you chopped it. It'll usually go kind of around um, or from the node right underneath. It's also on the same side that you chop it is the same side that the new growth is going to come out on. So if you want it to go to the right, you wanna chop the right side. If you want it to go to the left more, then you wanna chop the left side more. Uh, hopefully you're getting this and there's not a whole lot of plant crinkles um, and new new leaf growth you can see this has grown up this was just one leaf less than six months ago and it's just popped out so much growth um and then this is another one this is actually three plants in one pot and the big plant back there is a whole other plant and it's got a whole bunch of new growth popping out you can see maybe hopefully the camera's picking this up it's going to put out a new leaf right here you can see this lighter line area if you run your finger along it, you'll actually feel like a little bump and it's going to be pushing out a whole new growth there, which is just so cool. I'm so excited for that. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is the Philodendron Hestatum or the Philodendron Silver Sword. You can see, uh, well actually you can't because I covered it with tape. Uh, let me see. Okay, so you can kind of see. I chopped it. It was, this was a top cutting, okay, of a plant, which means like this is the top part of the plant. So they just gave me the top portion of it which is great um has a couple nodes it's pretty awesome and i rooted it and then i took the top cutting of that top cutting and that's going to still produce bigger leaves and i gifted it to a friend but what was left of that ended up pushing out new smaller growths and now you see we have these leaves here that got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger compared to these leaves here all right, so I don't have like a good choppy example. There's just too much bushiness going on with this big boy. Um, but you've definitely seen me chop and prop enough of these to know that I know what I'm talking about. Um, so when you chop, uh, here, actually, here's a good example. Okay, so when you chop a Maranta, you can see I chopped here and then it pushed out new growth from the node underneath the chop. And that was this whole big piece, okay? But you can see, the foliage before I chopped was actually pretty large. Um, I don't know what's on there. It doesn't look like a pest. Um, but you can see that the foliage was actually pretty large. And then what happened when I made that chop and it produced all new growth is it basically produced a baby plant. Look at all these little tiny leaves. And then you can see it it added a lot more, ah, there we go, I was focusing. It added a lot more nodes in there um, and produced a whole bunch of smaller foliage. So when you are going to be chopping and propping your Maranta, know that this is the outcome of it. You will get smaller, you will get more uh, foliage, but it does not push more growth out at the base like that, not very often. If you want your Maranta to grow mature and have these big, beautiful, luscious leaves like this, um, then you have to not chop it and you have to just let it continue to grow and know that if you do chop it, even with these big, beautiful leaves, you will end up with this smaller foliage. So, and I've done it with multiple Maranta and that's what happens with all of them. So just something to keep in mind if that's what you are planning on doing. Big boy over here is in quarantine still, um, just like our Calathea, but when you chop a syngonium it tends to push out more growth at the base um it will also kind of go around and um eh, sorry here is a prime example like i chopped here and you can see that it went back down to the last node and then it pushed off a whole other whole other grouping here but it is very resilient it divides on its own it just keeps things going um, it doesn't really seem to affect the plant too much. Just know that like the, oh, and there's an ant in there, which means I probably have mealybugs too. Dang it, this plant. <laughs> oh my gosh. But this is just uh, like the pothos. So just keep in mind, or the epipremnum, whatever you prefer to call it, that that's kind of what happens with it. So, but you can very easily get a very big and bushy plant. Um, just from going back and chopping it. It'll still grow really quick. And I noticed the foliage doesn't tend to revert and get smaller like the philodendron do. 
they still tend to stay pretty large. Their maturity doesn't seem to change that much, which is really nice. I think that's one of the reasons why it's such a propagated plant. So I did want to show you guys this. This is the Ludicia Discolor. I chopped it up in December. Um, I think I've gone and I showed you guys an update on this last time, but I wanted to show you again in the context of purposeful pruning. Just note that when you do chop it, it will go back to that last node and it will push out a whole other new growth. So, or it might not push out anything because it's been two months. This is still rooted, but it's not pushed out any new growth. This has also been the slowest method of propagation for these. So just another thing to keep in mind if you do decide to chop up your Ludicia discolor. This was fully rooted. This is the base of the plant. I chopped here. It pushed out this new growth months later. Okay, so I can't get in here too much because of the way that it echoes, and I'm sorry if it does echo, but I chopped here and it pushed out, this is a black pagoda lipstick plant. So I chopped here and it pushed out a whole new branch here, but it also gave me two new branches down on the bottom here that have since fully grown out. So just something to keep in mind with that too. So when you go to chop these, I feel if you want to make them more bushy, definitely chop closer kind of to the base and just know that the last node is where it's going to pop out a new shoot and you will end up getting more popping out at the base for you too. This is a cane begonia as opposed to a rex begonia. I noticed that when you chop, it produces a bunch of new growths off to the side at pretty much every single node, which is fantastic. Um, it'll also push out the most growth from the base. So there is that, and that is the best way I figured uh, from a cane begonia standpoint to get a more bushy plant is if you're going to chop it, kind of chop it where you're not going to see these ugly little knobs because new growth will come out from there, but it will get more bushy at the base. So it just kind of depends on what you really want it to do, but these things can actually get huge, like bamboo plants, nine feet tall, huge. They're really cool begonia, as opposed to the little Rex begonia I showed you earlier. These are thirsty dramatic plants. This is another fish tank, um, but you can see, ah, come on focus, there you go. So I chopped it here and it pushed out a new growth off to the side. It had another one over here and then that one didn't make it because of the lower humidity. But if you look, the leaves going this way, right? They're going horizontal. The next set of leaves from when it popped out, popped out vertical and then it popped out horizontal. So this one definitely has a pattern for intentional pruning if you want, and then that's how you can get a more bushy plant for you. But you can see I've propagated this a lot, and this was just the last node. It'll propagate from the last node underneath the cut. So you could cut like, I mean, you can cut way up here and it's still going to push out new growth from the base here. I've definitely talked about Fetonia propagation before and their love of symmetry and planning. Uh, <laughs> you can see this is a prime example. This one isn't throwing a fit here. There you go. So you can see it got chopped right there in the center and it pushed out a new growth on one side and a new growth on the other side. A lot of times one side will die off if the humidity is not enough and then the other side will keep going anyway. But in this particular case, you can see the one side did continue to grow and the other side grew a little bit more and a little fast. If you want a more full and bushy pilea plant, then you kind of want to chop off the top and it's just going to push out a lot more new growth for you. Um, if you take off leaves from the side as well, it will tend to put out new pups and new growth from that area as well. If you want to propagate it though, you have to have part of the center stem. You cannot just take a leaf off like you can with a peperomia. They're a little bit more finicky. Okay, so this is the last plant I wanted to show you. We're circling back around to Skindapsis. I just wanted to show you that I did take a chop here and it went back to the previous node and it pushed out more growth. Um, the internodes were smaller again as well, just like with the Epipremnum and the Pothos. Um, I also wanted to note that the foliage difference between, it didn't get smaller. It stayed the same. If anything, this leaf got larger because it was attached and then it's gotten smaller since. So, but just something to keep in mind, the foliage does not get smaller with the Skindapsis when you chop and prop like that but they do behave like the pothos in the sense that they'll go off to the side after going back to that last node. So, oh my gosh, such a beautiful plant. 
so beautiful. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I know I've talked about this subject a little bit on Instagram and a little bit on TikTok before. I've just kind of dipped my toe in it a little bit, but I really kind of wanted to deep dive and do a little bit more in depth with that for you today. I know it was kind of a shorter video, but I really appreciate you watching. Um, I will have my vlog popping out on Saturday for you this week. I promise I'm on top of it. I got it coming for you, I promise. <laughs> so. If you're not subscribed, definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button so that way you can stay up to date on all the plenty awesomeness going on here. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!